Hey, it's Sissel and Verse, and today I'm going to be doing the Booktubian tag. So I was tagged by Belinda's Book Nook, and, you know, let's just get into the questions. Who slash what got you into Booktube? Uh, so Onyx Pages encouraged me to. I kind of talk about this in my Booktube newbie tag, but... I wasn't really watching booktube before, so really, like, if she hadn't encouraged me to start a channel, I wouldn't be here. How did you choose your channel name? Again, Onyx Pages. Um, she was like, what's the main thing keeping you from starting a channel right now after she encouraged me to start a channel? And I was like, I don't have a good name. And she's like, what are some things about you? And I was like, well, I like plants and... I feel like thistles represent me. And she's like, Thistle and Verse, that's your name. And I was like, cool. Guess I have no choice now. <laughs> Guess I don't have an excuse not to get on here anymore. And I don't super remember why I chose thistles. There are like a few special breeds of thistles, but by and large, like you see thistles growing like on the side of the road. They just kind of pop up. People don't really like plant them on purpose. And they kind of have spiky leaves. But I still think they're really pretty, like they have that pink uh, tuft, like they're the flower from my intro. I don't know, I saw that spoke to me, like I'm, uh, I don't know about the part about just growing on the side of the road, but the being prickly part I definitely related to, <laughs> I think that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I think the idea was that I'm not like a terribly flashy person, but like I still have a spark and certain like unique perspective that's not necessarily like grand and like maybe like the most eye-catching but like it's there and it's a it's a subtle beauty you know yeah I just pulled that out of my ass but like let's pretend that's what I thought when I picked my name who are the first friends you made on booktube if we're talking about booktube friends friends who I would discuss books with Deidre of Shade Tree Reads, Erica of the Broken Spine, Shane of Luxurious Blue. I don't know. It's also like I started talking to people kind of late into forming my channel. I don't know if there's people who would consider me a book true friend that I'm like leaving out. Why do you love reading books? I love the sense of freedom and like this idea that there's like new worlds and new possibilities. And like sometimes I read for comfort, not as much just because like the genres that I read are usually about like social issues there's not a whole lot that's terribly comforting about them like if I get comfort from a book it's usually just like the familiarity like I'm rereading something but yeah there are ways in my life that I feel kind of like constrained and boxed in and I feel like books give me a chance to like reevaluate that like just like pretend that those boxes don't exist and also like this thing that I think is a box, you know, is it actually a box or is it like a mirage of a box? I don't know. I can't come up with an analogy, but you know what I mean. Sometimes you make things into obstacles that aren't really as big an obstacle as you think they are. You just kind of need to like reframe things in your mind and then it becomes really obvious how to work around them. What is your favorite way to film a video? Camera, lighting, makeup, etc. So, as you may notice, this isn't the highest quality booktube production. I film on my laptop in iMovie. I don't wear makeup. I just, in general, don't know how to do makeup that good. Um, and it takes me a while. And I feel like I already make excuses not to film and why editing takes so long. Like, I'm like, if the stars are like two degrees out of alignment, I'm like, oh no, it's a wash. I just can't do anything. So I feel like trying to do makeup would just add like another layer of reasons for me to try and weasel out of making videos. So I just don't bother with it and I probably won't. Like maybe I'll try and put on lip gloss and like a nude eyeshadow in the future, but like I think that is as far as it will go. Um, in terms of lighting, I used to use sunlight, but again, stars aligning, I'd be like, oh, it's like slightly cloudy or like, oh, I didn't plan around being at home while the sun was still up. And also like, I just kind of couldn't use that setup anymore. I'm down in my basement. 
So now I'm just using the lights down here and I'm just like, I hope it's enough. I don't use a mic right now. I'm looking for a lapel mic. And by that, I mean, I'm thinking about researching lapel mics that would work. And I haven't done that yet. I haven't reached out and asked people yet. So I will try and do that soon because that would make my life a lot easier. What was your first collaboration and who was it with? I haven't collabed with anyone yet, but what I know for sure is happening and like when is that I'm planning a Black Speculative Fiction readathon in October. That is we're going to be reading Speculative Fiction by Black authors. And that is with Lucy of Lucy Reads and Jerry of Onyx Pages, Nori of Nori Reads, and Arlene of Black Pressed Books. Arlene is a book blogger and bookstagrammer in case that like name doesn't sound familiar. So yes, that will probably be my first collab. Um, oh, and I it would have been fun. Erica of The Broken Spine invited me to do a live uh, discussion of An Unkindness of Ghosts with her. Wendy the book nerd and Shane of Luxurious Blue and that would have been a lot of fun if I could have made it but I had a book discussion planned that day. I was moderating a discussion of um, Pet by Quake and Mezzi so I just couldn't make it. That um, what keeps you going on booktube? Definitely like the comments and the encouragement like people telling me that my videos have helped them make a decision. When I'm like on the fence about something I feel bad about steering people away from it but like People have different reading tastes, right? Like, I just hope that it's helpful for, like, people figuring out, like, does this book fit in with their reading taste? Uh, how do you respond to hate messages and comments? So I haven't had to yet, which is good. I kind of self-censor both, like, consciously and, like, unconsciously. I've realized, like, in watching myself that, like, things that, like, in my head are very clear and I'm making a very strong point. Like, when I watch the video, I'm like, the strong language that's in my head just like isn't there. So I'm kind of trying to work on just like being consistent because I feel like the way I talk in my head and phrase things in my head is how I like want to convey it on video and like I want to be better at just like calling a thing a thing. But yeah. So I kind of self-censored so like I haven't had to deal with uh, hate comments and stuff. It's like definitely something I was very conscious of like when I was starting. I was like YouTube's kind of known for being a cesspool, like, in terms of, like, it's moderating and stuff. That definitely was something I was, like, very self-conscious about when I first started. Like, it was, like, a big reason why, like, I didn't want to get on here. So, I mean, if it happened, I'd probably just delete and block. I don't have, like, clever insults. There wouldn't really be any point. I just, like, don't want them in the space and I don't want them bothering me or me. Who are your favorite authors and book series? There can be more than one. Oh, gosh. I'm just going to go with an easy option and say that my favorite authors are Octavia Butler, N.K. Jemisin, and River Solomon, and my favorite series is the Bro Broken Earth trilogy. Well, like, I have conflicting feelings about some of Octavia Butler's stuff, but, like, I feel like she's, like, very consistently has stuff that, like, I could reread, like, many times and get, like, different things out of it. N.K. Jemisin is just, like, an autobi author, in my opinion, like... She is just consistently, like, a stellar author. Like, her worlds are interesting. Um, her plot lines are, like, intriguing. And River of Solomon, I just feel like, is very innovative. And, like, the themes that they cover and, like, the worlds that they create. And the Broken Earth series is just, like, my favorite. I always say it's, like, one of my favorite fantasy series. But, like, when people ask me for my favorite fantasy series, that's, like, always, like, the only one I ever say. So it probably just is, like, my favorite fantasy series, like, ever at this point. I don't know if there's a series that I like more, if I'm being honest. Maybe Magnifique Noir or Brianna Lawrence. It's just like something I like in a different way. It's like more fun, you know? Whereas I feel like the Broken Earth trilogy is like fun, but like it's very serious and very like gut-wrenching. Gosh, yeah, those might be it. I mean, I feel like those aren't bad choices. I, I'm kind of happy with it. Um, so the last question was to give some advice, like based on your experience on BookTube. And at first I didn't really know what to say because I haven't been here for super long. I don't really feel like I have a mastery of anything that like qualifies me to give advice on it. But I thought about it for a bit. And I feel like I had like maybe two nuggets or so of advice to give. I feel like the first one is like, I encourage people not to be like wallflowers in BookTube. Like, I know when you first start out and you're like kind of small, it can feel like there isn't really a point in like 
reaching out to people for collabs or like in organizing things because your reach is so small it feels like it's not going to get the engagement that you want or something like that but like you can be pleasantly surprised by what happens like by who's willing to buddy read stuff with you by who's willing to collab with you and just like the impact that you can have i'm thinking in particular of two booktubers soila kenya and reading black soila kenya created the african fantasy and science fiction readathon which focuses on reading fantasy and science fiction set either somewhere in Africa or in a place inspired by some African cultures. And reading Black created the Black Booktuber tag. I think these are both, you know, things that are very important to Booktube. Booktube does tend to be very US centric. I think it's important to read books set in places outside the US and just like in general, trying to like think more globally. And I think like the black booktuber tag has been, you know, monumentally helpful in finding other black booktubers. I know black booktubers often feel like they're isolated and they have trouble finding people because the algorithm is a pain to navigate. When both of those booktubers created the readathon or the tag, I think they were both under 200 subscribers. And, you know, they both made something that was like, I think, incredibly useful to the community and incredibly important and very impactful. Also, just like as someone who's kind of reserved, like it's very easy for me to feel like I'm participating in things when actually I'm not really doing anything. Like I realized I was spending a lot of time kind of aimlessly scrolling through Twitter and like liking and retweeting and stuff. And I was watching a lot of booktube videos and commenting and like that's great for building rapport and like supporting other people in the community. But while all that was going on, I wasn't making a whole lot of content. Um, I wasn't really focusing on my channel. I kind of had to like remind myself, you need to do more planning, you need to be more like active, like working stuff. Like even though that's like more difficult for me, it's just like something I need to do. Cause like if there's no content on my channel, like who cares if I retweet or comment on other people's stuff. And I guess the second piece of advice is Kind of like checking in with yourself about your goals and like why you're setting them. Like I kind of mentioned in my book to birthday tag that I was kind of struggling with like what did I want out of this channel and like why did I want it? Like I said like I wanted a physical arc of something and I'm just kind of like thinking about it. It's like did I just say that for a prompt on this book to birthday tag or do I like actually want to get physical arcs? Like how is going to get a physical arc like materially change my life, materially change how I feel about myself and my channel. Also, what unique opportunities does getting a physical arc set me up for? How is that going to be a good pivot for me to grow my channel, grow as a creator? And if it is something that I really care about, like, you know, how am I going to get there? I think for me, I found I was setting goals that just like weren't super serving me like are your goals like achievable and important or are you kind of like setting yourself up for disappointment are you kind of setting yourself up to get sidetracked so yeah you know things to think about well thank you for watching if you like the video please hit the like button if you want to join the discussion please comment below if you want to stay up to date with me and my bookish activities please subscribe if you haven't done so already thank you have a good one goodbye